At the time of his death in 1900, Cushman Kellogg Davis was relatively well known throughout the United States. Here's a look at the life of Minnesota's seventh governor. Governor Cushman Davis was the seventh governor of Minnesota, elected in 1873. He fought in the Civil War. He was an aide to General Willis Gorman. He was a U.S. District Attorney, and he was a member of the Minnesota House of Representatives when he ran for the governor's office. What brought him to St. Paul? Well, he was uh, pretty much raised in Wisconsin. So when the Civil War began, he became a lieutenant of the 28th uh, Wisconsin Infantry. And he eventually ends up serving under Willis Gorman as his adjutant, kind of his right-hand person for that, for that job during the Civil War. Um, in 1864, he got malaria, so he was discharged. And so he went back to Wisconsin, tried to recoup from his, you know, his malaria. And they suggested, go to St. Paul. You know, that's a nice climate. You can get yourself you know, better if you'd move to that city. Well, he did that. And about the same time he moved to St. Paul, Willis Gorman uh, was done with his military service. They were both lawyers. And so they joined together, as, or he joined Willis Gorman's law firm. So he started here as a lawyer and um, regained his health and became, you know, one of our most noted politicians in the 19th century. What was occurring in Minnesota when Governor Davis took office? Well, it was a kind of a time of transition politically. Um, you have pretty much the Republican Party in control of Minnesota politics. So you have a lot of, you know, political leaders that were Civil War veterans, which helps them move into that powerful, those different powerful positions. But Minnesota was growing and expanding agriculturally. But in the 1870s, when he became governor, we were just at the beginning edge of all these grasshopper plagues. So it was a pretty big catastrophic event for the state of Minnesota because farmers would plant their crops. A few weeks later, the grasshoppers would come through, destroy everything. So people were destitute. You know, the, the agricultural products were down. People couldn't you know, feed their families. So he, um, basically as a governor, really push for some state support to give to the farmers in southern and western Minnesota because of the grasshopper plague. So this was an early example of state-sponsored disaster relief. Right, yeah, and that was one of the first times, and, and we'll see that with other governors too in the 1870s, you know, that's really the first time we really send or dedicate state money for a, a state emergency, basically, is what it became. And, and the other thing about that too, the railroads were a pretty big entity in the 1870s, and so they're expanding their power. You know, you're building railroads throughout the state of Minnesota, so um, they had a lot of control. And so that was one thing he kind of pushed against. You know, he didn't want them to become too powerful. What role did Governor Davis play in establishing some parameters for, for the railroads? Yeah, to establish that railroad commission, which was pretty prominent in Minnesota politics all the way into probably the 1930s and 40s when railroads kind of weren't as, as big a deal as they were back in the 1800s. Governor Davis sought to amend Minnesota's constitution to allow women to vote in school board elections and to hold office. Was this a precursor to women's suffrage? Yeah, there was a lot of push in the state legislature for women to vote. Um, and this was kind of that first dent into breaking that wall of access to the political process. Because it didn't happen officially until 1920. Right. And so, but there were other governors before and after um, Cushman Davis that were advocating for women's suffrage. And there just wasn't enough support within the legislature to do that. But he was able to kind of uh, open that door and push the idea that women can vote in school board elections and they could even serve as school board members. So that was kind of the first step into kind of cracking that door open for future women's suffrage and you know rights for women a little bit more in Minnesota government. Cushman Davis not only served as governor of Minnesota but then later served as a senator in the US Senate. What are some of his other major accomplishments? He was very politically motivated. And so when he became governor, you know, he was always keeping his eyes open for that big Senate seat. And so he only served the one term because he ran for the U.S. Senate seat the following uh, term and uh, never was successful until the 1880s. So it took him, you know, at least 12 years to get into that position. And so 
he was politically active, you know, after he served as governor, just within the Republican Party. Um, when he became senator, he was a chairman or, you know, pretty influential um, uh, senator in the Foreign Relations Committee. So when he was senator in 1898, we had the war against Spain, so we had the Spanish-American War. And so he was the one who wrote up the ultimatum for us going to war against Spain. He also was part of the, the peace treaty, the Paris Peace Treaty, where they resolved, you know, the land that the Spanish would have to give up. And so he pretty much was a, a mover and shaker within the Senate and was really well known throughout the United States at that time.